えー、めーまれめーまれめーまれめーまれめー。Thank you, Jesus.Thank you, Jesus.Thank you, mighty Jesus.Thank you, the ancient of days.Thank you, our great and awesome God.Thank you, mighty God who is always there to bless his children. Father, the hour has come. Come and have your way tonight. Come and touch us in a special way, Lord. We recognize our sins. We recognize our unworthiness, Almighty Jesus. And so we ask for mercy tonight. Wash us clean that we shall be whiter than snow. And take not away from all the gift of your Holy Spirit, but restore unto us the joy. Of thy salvation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus and we stand against every spirit of destruction tonight. We rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, even as you are ready to speak to us. Father, Lord, talk to our minds, talk to our hearts. Let this message. Be a quality time with you, Lord. Let it be a time to harvest your word and to bear fruit, O King of Glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, my dear man. My dear friends, I have the great pleasure tonight to welcome every one of us to the hearts of Jesus and Mary Ministries. And today we are going to take just a quick reading from Luke chapter 13, verse 10 to 17. Luke chapter number 13, verse 10 to 17. Now I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, He called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant, Because Jesus had cured on a Sabbath day, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured. And not on Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites. Does not each of you on the Sabbath day untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. And this is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise be to you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for this message. Thank you for the scripture. Thank you because you have spoken and you will still speak again. You would enlighten us to understand, to break down the message, to come down to our level, to our individual lives, so that we see the applications of this word of yours in our lives, O oh God. And so we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen, my name. My dear friends, today we read from Luke chapter 13, verse 10 to 17, the story of how Jesus healed a crippled woman, a woman who was crippled for 18 years. And the Bible says that the reason for her infirmity was because a spirit, a demon spirit, the spirit of infirmity, a crippling spirit, overpowering spirit, had crippled her. If you look at this story that we have read, you see that this woman, even though she was crippled, even though she was an object of pity, even though that the sickness, the, she was crippled to the point that she could not even raise herself up. Yes, she kept coming to the church. She kept coming to the synagogue. She took her misery, her crisis, to the house of God. Was she oppressed? Yes, she was. But she took it to the church, to the house of God. <laughs> People were saying a lot of things about her. People considered her that it was because of her sin that she was going through this misery. Because in the culture of the ancient Israel, any person with some infirmity was considered a sinner. So the society branded this woman a sinner. But she was not discouraged from going to the house of God to worship God. Not minding all the odds against her. <laughs> she kept going to the house of God. Let our attention be drawn to the fact that that the Bible took, took time to explain to us the gravity of the situation of this woman. And so let's go to Luke 13 verse, verse 11. And the Bible says, And just then there appeared a woman, of course the woman we're talking about, with the spirit that had crippled her for 18 years, now pay attention, for she was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. She was bent over and was unable to stand up straight. I just paused so that you think about it. Imagine somebody bent over against his or her wish. And cannot stand straight. If you visualize this, you see that the person was forced 
by that situation to be looking down. Because the only way you can look up is when you stand straight. When you are bent over, you focus on the ground. You look on the ground. You want to look up, you cannot. It is difficult to look up when you are bent. You can try to practicalize it. You see that it's difficult. It is much easier to look up when you stand straight. But she has been overpowered by this crippling spirit so that she would not look up. But in spite of this situation, this woman kept looking up with the eyes of her heart, with the eyes of her faith. The enemy forced her not to look up physically, but in the spirit, she was strong. She was not disabled spiritually. Physically she was, but spiritually she was free. She was not caged. Her spirit loved God. Her spirit kept going to the house of prayer. Compare her with someone who may be free, who doesn't even have an obvious uh, physical disability. But the person wakes up in the morning, dresses up to go to work, stays at work, does everything, comes back, goes to sleep. He doesn't have time to pray. He doesn't have time to go to church. He doesn't have time for even to read the Bible, not even to go to the fellowship, but he will have time to go to work. He will have time to visit his friends, but not to visit Jesus, not to have time with Jesus. Such a person is spiritually crippled, although physically he has no impediment. He has no uh, no disability. My dear friends, the story of this woman is speaking to us in so many ways. Her story speaks to us. Many of us have reasons Ten thousand reasons why we cannot go to church, why we cannot go to a house of prayer, why we cannot read the Bible. So many reasons. And some of these reasons may come down to the point of certain limitations that we use as excuse or excuses to justify why we would not go to church or go to a house of prayer or even to live a life of prayer. Somebody may have certain limitations that prevent him or her from going to church. But let's imagine the worst, the person, someone who cannot even get up from the bed. Someone who is crippled, who is arrested and kept, who is bedridden, even in that terrible situation. That bed can as well be an altar of prayer. It can be a place of prayer. We can always 
reach God, no matter the situation we find ourselves. The life of this woman is talking to us tonight. Someone will say, why, why, why bother yourself, woman? Why uh, take the pace to go to church? But she kept going to the house of prayer. Imagine the pain in what she was going through. Each time she wants to stand straight, because God, God made man to stand straight. So whenever the natural desire to stand straight comes, there will be a sharp pain on the spinal cord. And she would be forced to bend over. So each time she's walking, she'll be walking with pain. We never saw this woman, but at least we could see her situation. We could imagine it. The Bible didn't tell her that she was walking with a stick. But it was expected that she was walking with a stick. To give her, uh, to help her in, in, in her struggles. Going to church. Going to the market. Going to the farm or to the garden. Even to eat, to make her food. She was carrying pain. Just to get off from the bed. He was a pain. Even to to turn on the bed, she would go through pain. Even to dress herself, herself up, that would be pain. All her life was a life of pain. To take a step, to make a step, to go to church was with a pain. But she did not allow this pain to prevent her from going to serve God. <laughs> when we come to the level that the situation we go through, the pains we go through, the stress we go through, the infirmity we go through, even the emotional trauma we go through, when we come to the point that these things cannot prevent us or should not or would not prevent us from coming to serve God, I tell you, at that point, we have proven that we are matured. We are matured. If somebody will say, oh, because of the rain, it may not be little, it's big rain, maybe small rain. But you say, oh, uh, I cannot go to church that is just nearby. That you could as well trek, but you have a car. But, oh, what if we trek first? Or what if, excuse me, it will come. If we give the enemies opportunity to deceive us, this woman kept going to the house of God. <laughs> she didn't give reasons why she should not she would not go to the house of prayer. With her situation, she continued to serve God. <laughs> With the little strength she had, she kept going to the house of God. But the day came, and she kept doing this for years. That Jesus showed up in a synagogue. There were so many synagogues. Jesus was always going to synagogue. He would go to a particular city or town. And on the Sabbath day, he would go to the synagogue. Now, on this very case, 
Jesus came to the synagogue in this town. The synagogue on the Sabbath day. Of course, that's the testament of uh, Luke chapter 13 verse 10. Jesus showed up. This woman knew that Jesus was a healer. The news of, the, of Jesus healing people had been known to her. But she never knew. It never come to her, to her that Jesus was going to come to the synagogue that day. To that her synagogue. To that place she used to go to worship. She never knew that Jesus would come to that place. Don't forget that she had been crippled for 18 years. You know what we learn from that? It means that even before the public ministry of Jesus started, this woman was already crippled. Jesus was in active ministry for three years. Active ministry. At the age of 30, active ministry started. By the age of 33, he was crucified. So, about two, three years, Jesus was in active ministry. But this woman was crippled for 18 years. Surely, she was already crippled before she even heard about Jesus. Before she even knew about Jesus. But she gave, she kept going to the synagogue. Knowing fully well that God is good to be worshipped no matter the situation. No matter the crisis. No matter the poverty. Okay? No matter what I don't have, God is good to be served. This message must be allowed to come to our minds to question us. What are those limitations in my life that I have allowed to make me not to serve God who I should? Some people say, oh, brother, I will have children that, that is always disturbing. I don't even have time to come to the prayer like the way I should. It is not right. God gave the children. The children shouldn't be a, 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 a crippling circumstance. That's blessing. If the children will not prevent us from going to work, why would children, or why would blessings that God has given to us prevent us from Living a life of prayer. The life of this woman is challenging us. But let not her life bring her to, ju to the judgment day. A question of, of trying to explain ourselves or defend our positions. Let her story, her circumstance. Let her life not condemn us on the day of judgment. Because if we give excuses why we don't go to serve God the way we're supposed to, and God brings this woman to be <laughs> to be a, to be a, a, a point of reference to us, what uh, what what is the basis for for our defense? God is talking to us. Whatever the situation, let us keep going to the house of prayer. This woman will be looking forward to the Sabbath day. She was married. In the culture of the Jews, don't forget, 
she was already labeled a sinner. So who wants to go and marry a sinner? Who wants to go and marry a crippled woman? You see that? Yet, she carried her reproach to the house of God. Just like Hannah. Carrying her barrenness, her, 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 her shame to the house of God. Crying to God in the temple. And Eli took notice of her. And we know how God saw her tears and gave her somewhere. But the situation of Hannah did not stop her from going to Shiloh. It did not. She kept going to Shiloh. In fact, the Bible said that every year they will go to Shiloh to worship God. She had been going to Shiloh for years. <laughs> but there was a day she went to Shiloh. There was a year she went to Shiloh. And that was the last Shiloh she would go as a barren woman. Amen, amen. <laughs> Elkanah, that is the husband of uh, Hannah, would always take his family to the house of prayer. Every year. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 3 that year after year, this man, Elkanah, went up from his town to worship and sacrifice the Lord Almighty at the Shiloh. Okay? He had two wives, Hannah and the Penina. Penina didn't have a problem. She had children. So somebody could say, okay, Penina was going to serve God because she, she was blessed. She had, she had children, you know. Uh, she, so she was settled. The heart of Hannah. Hannah was not blessed like Penina. Hannah was considered a barren. But every year she would join her husband to go to Shiloh. She knew that her case would be settled in the house of God. She knew that. She knew that it was a prayer that would settle her case. She knew that. She knew that her husband cannot settle this matter. Her husband cannot give her the, the, the child or children that she, 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 she was desiring. She knew that the husband cannot do that. If you read First Samuel chapter 1, you see that the, the husband that really loved Hannah so much, even more than Penina. And would, as First Samuel chapter one verse five would tell us, Kana uh, Kana uh, uh, would give, you know, double portion of um, uh, of of uh, what, uh, the proceeds of of, of uh, sacrifice, you know, to Hannah, um, just because he loved her so much. Okay. And uh, Hannah knew that the husband loved her so much, more than Penina. But she kept crying to the point that her husband stood there, look, my friend, eat the food. She said, no, I'm not going to eat. She, she was just downhearted. She was just broken.
And the husband could not even hold it again. He said, look, I have loved you so much, and you know that I love you so much. Even though you don't have a child, you know if it were my power to give it to you, I will give you ten sons. I will give you more than you require. I will just give you sons. But this is beyond me. However, because of the love I have for you, am I not worth more than ten sons to you, Elkanah? Am I not worth more than 10 sons? Why don't you want to eat? Why are you crying? Why are you downhearted? <laughs> but Hannah told him, Yes, I know you love me. I know you love me. I know if it were your power to give me children, you would give me sons. You give me ten, ten. But you see, you're a husband. You are not my son. I need a son. And I will go to he, the person, he, the person who is able to give son, who is able to give children. And so she left to the scene and went right inside the temple and began to cry, to cry to the one who gives children in the temple. And God could not hold her, could not hold her blessings again. And God said to her, The Bible says, in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly until she lost her voice. Give a promise to God, saying, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11, If you give me a child in this my misery, I will give this child back to you. This child will serve you all the days of my life. What a great sacrifice. What a great promise. My dear friends, God, my, in Christ Jesus, let us not allow the situations we go through to stop us from coming to serve God the way we should. In fact, as a matter of fact, it is the, it's supposed to be the other way around. The, the, the ugly situation we go through, the storm we go through, the, the, what is considered limitations that are, are imposed upon our lives, are the reasons why we should even be praying more than the way we used to pray. They are the reason why we should even come to God. <laughs> amen, man, amen. Some people stopped going to church. I, I'm not talking of what I hear. These are people I know, really. Stopped going to church, to the house of prayer, because they have not gotten what they wanted from God. Even this ministry. I know people who have left this ministry because they have... The, the, the God has not said to them what they wanted God to give. God hadn't given that. But because they wanted a particular thing from God and they haven't received from God. Anyway, the other ones God have done becomes meaningless. Because the doses are not even counted as blessed again or as answered prayers. Because God has not given you husband. You forgot about the way he said to you in the immigration problem. You forgot about the fact the, the, the so many healings he gave to you. You forgot about the accident he saved you from. You forgot about so many uncountable miracles that God has done for you. It's not because you're not giving husband or giving you a child or children. You come blind to other situations, to the blessings of God. My own people of God, God wants us to keep serving Him. In fact, to have joy in going to serve Him. Let us not focus on the crippling situation. Let us focus on the God who is able to cripple that crippling situation. 
Let us focus on God, not on the situation. That is what the life of this woman is talking to us today. Thank God that the Bible didn't tell us her name. So that woman could be anyone. It could even be a man. Amen, man, amen. She kept us having God. <laughs> Hello! But I'm so grateful to God that the life of this woman changed the day Jesus showed up. It was when Jesus showed up that her mess, her ugliness came to a full stop. Her life changed. <laughs> when Jesus showed up. She didn't know he would show up that day. When Jesus showed up. To her surprise. And even though that Jesus showed up in the church in the synagogue that day. However, there were so many people in the synagogue that day. Don't forget that. It was not this woman that she wasn't the only person in the church or in the synagogue. Many other people came to the synagogue. But all this time, God had been watching her. God had been taking note of her sacrifice. Oh, brother, what do you mean by sacrifice? Each time this woman gets up, defies her pain, and goes to the church, it is recorded as a sacrifice in heaven. It may take people just 10 minutes to walk to the church. But she would manage to walk for over two hours. Perhaps. But it never Weaken her. Huh? She never gave up. She continued to carry the pain to go to church. Each time she does that, that is a sacrifice. Each time that people look down on her, even those that had horses or donkeys or some animals that would take them to the, to the synagogue, and they, and they will they will pass by her without even rendering any help. They will even look down on her. And she kept walking. Some sometimes the the stampings of the of the horse or the donkey on the mud could even splash on her. But she never God discouraged. She kept going to church. Each time she defies that that weakening situation, she gets a record of sacrifice acceptable to God. All right. Each time people tell her, "All this synagogue you have been going all these years for for eighteen years, you have been going to this very church." What have you? What is your testimony? You you haven't gotten a testimony. You are a sinner. You are going there to block others from taking their seat. Each time that happens, she kept going to church. I hope God is talking to somebody tonight. And because she was considered a sinner, I, would we expect people to sit around her in the synagogue? Of course not. People would just, just leave her on that seat and make sure that they don't come near to her, lest they have sin uh, corrupts them. Yet, even though she was not accepted, even though that she was carrying a stigma, even though that people have been looking at down on her, she kept going to the synagogue. There are people who don't go to church because the way the pastor is treating them, the way they the the members of the church are looking at, at, at him or her or looking at his family. 
or maybe uh, the way that uh, she she has not been given opportunity to sing in a choir because uh, because of her race or because of her color or maybe oh because I don't have money that's why I'm not made the chief launcher in the bazaar. Wasn't he going to the church? That's the way the pastor behaves. He doesn't even talk to me. Wasn't he going to the church? You see, that is how carnal mind thinks. If you are that type of person, stop it. We go to God because God is good. We go to this church to serve God. Because serving God is good. We're not going there to serve human beings. We're not going there to look at the people. No, or to make people to look at us. If we are going to church for people to look at us, or to look at people, we are far away. That's what the, the life of this woman is talking to us today about. <laughs> Look at David. The moment I heard, let us go to the house of God, I was filled with joy. This was a king talking. This was a king. You might even say, oh, bro, you know that, you know, David was a king. He was already blessed, you know. So, I mean, he should serve God well. Who told you? Who told you? Is it not known to us also that riches, when they are not well handled, can make someone not to have time to serve God? Don't you know that? Do we not know that even being in a position of power, like David, Could make someone who is not seasoned in the things of God not to have time to serve God. Many people, when they were nobody, they had time to go to church, go to fellowship. Every time the church sweeping the church, I mean, every time life is in the church all the time. Have we not seen such people now? Becoming maybe top political leaders, becoming prominent in the society, but they don't have time again. They don't pray again. You may think, okay, because you don't find them in your church, um, and maybe they have attended another church. No, most of them don't have time again to serve God. Such a person has been crippled. By wealth. Wealth can cripple somebody's spiritual life. I'm not saying that wealth is not good. And I'm not saying that wealth must cripple somebody's uh, life. No. No, 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 no. Far from that. But if we do not master wealth, wealth will master us and lead us away from God. <laughs> Amen. We should not allow ourselves, no matter what we have, or no matter what we don't have, to affect our relationship with God. And if you find yourself like this woman, whose name is not mentioned in the scripture that we've read, read, just read in Luke chapter 11, verse 10 and following, we... Sorry, Luke chapter 13, verse 10 and following. We see that this woman captures the life of so many people, of so many children of God. And we are warned not to allow what is dealing with us 
to take away our life of relationship with God. Our God is good and has been worshipped. And so, my dear friends, the theme of this message is when Jesus shows up. When Jesus shows up. And this theme is taken from the fact that this woman kept going to the house of prayer in spite of her situations, in spite of years of going to synagogue. She never got tired of going to the house of prayer. Yes, she had been hearing that Jesus is Jesus had been doing wonders in many synagogues and Jesus had been visiting some synagogues, but she kept going to synagogue. But today Jesus has come to her. Jesus has come to the synagogue because of her. Oh come on, bro, how do you know that? Because when Jesus came to the synagogue, the Bible says in Luke thirteen, verse eleven. That Jesus pointed at her and said, Woman, come. Come. There were so many people in the synagogue, but Jesus just came in. And told the woman, come. Okay? And the woman came. And Jesus healed her. And she was the only person that Jesus healed in that synagogue that day. So, Jesus came to the synagogue just for her. Her sacrifice for all these years, her perseverance all these years are to be settled. Are to be rewarded. She it's time to settle her. She has been suffering all these years, but now it's time to settle her. First Peter five ten says, After you have suffered a while, I will say to you. A time of settlement had come for this woman. But there was a time of sacrifice. Whatever is a good thing you are doing, keep doing the good. Because you don't know the day that Jesus will show up. You don't know the day he will come to you. Because of your sacrifice. People may be taking advantage of you. They may have seen you as a gentle person. I said, they talk, talk at you anyhow. And, you know, deride you. But when they need something for you, they come. And yet you give it. So they see you as a fool. And it's hurting you. Sister, let it not hurt you. Let it not hurt you. Keep doing it. You're not doing it for them. You're doing it for yourself. Brother, do you know what I'm talking about? Keep doing the good. Keep doing the good. You don't know the day that heaven will come to settle you because of it. You don't know. You don't know. And when heaven will come to say to you, you, you won't even remember it was because of your persistence. It's because of this thing you have been doing. That is the reason why you have been, that heaven has come to say to you. There was this testimony I shared some time ago. This, this didn't happen. That, this, that testimony didn't happen this ministry. I shared the testimony of a, of a young man who was a... Um, Overpowered by some hoodlums, um, they took his uh, cell phone and took him to a very distant place, and uh, they he was to be killed there. He was to be killed. And uh, it was done on this young man that he was going to be killed. But when they shot at him, the gun did not respond. Okay. And um, the people were surprised. 
So their leader now took the gun himself and they shot him. And uh, the gun could not respond. But when they turned the nozzle of the gun to some other place, the, the gun will respond. So they gave up and they gave him back his phone and asked him to leave. Now, this young man, he had a voice. You see, when God wants to save you, eh, nothing will stop him. He had a voice, and this voice told him that your mother paid the sacrifice. Your mother paid the sacrifice. That every time she goes to clean the church, the mother was a, a widow, that the, every time she goes to the church to, to, to clean the seat, to wipe the seat, to sweep the church, she kept doing this for years. And so the pastor was now helping her to raise her children, paying even this boy that I was talking to the story happened to that he, he, he this happened when that boy was a student and this boy it was this pastor was that was paying for the tuition, paying the you know, take care of his school. Now but God now said that look, your mother paid the sacrifice for each time she goes to the church to clean the pews in my church, I was taking note. Tell her that she had paid the price to save her son. <laughs> I am telling you something tonight. Whatever good you are doing, keep doing it, even if it doesn't make sense. Even if you're not recognized or appreciated, Keep doing it. Your husband may not appreciate what you are doing. Your wife may not appreciate what you are doing in the family. Keep doing it. Because a day of reward is coming. <laughs> when Jesus shows up, he will say to you, he will say to you. There's no way Jesus will show up Without settling that soul that is always seeking him. There's a way of doing good. Let's keep doing it. Keep talking to people about Jesus. You never knew the day that Jesus will come to say to you. Many people have gotten healed. Like this woman who was crippled, without even knowing when they got healed, just because of their persistence in doing good, in serving God. God is not like a man who may not take note of what is done or what is done in the secret. God sees what is done in secret. Okay. God can never ignore the sacrifice of a just soul. He will never ignore it. Keep doing the good. Keep praying. Keep serving God. When Jesus shows up, hey, hey. when Jesus shows up, he will wipe your tears. He will. He will wipe your tears. Amen. Many of you may have heard that story some few years ago. A boy, um, I believe that boy should be in his maybe early twenties or thereabouts. But but he was born crippled. So he was always begging. Begging. His brother, the only brother, the only sibling he he has, um, was mad. Completely mad. Now the mother that gave birth to two of them, 
was also mad. So in the family, of course, uh, he doesn't have a father. Uh, the mother was also a beggar. A mad beggar. Okay. So get back to two children. Only God knows how you got the children. Um, but then the boy I'm talking about happened to be the only one that that happened not to have madness out of the two children, okay? But but then um he was crippled. You see that in this family something was fundamentally wrong. Okay, but then <laughs> in the night he had a dream, and he encountered Jesus. And he told him to go to stand up in a dream. I've heard you. In the night, he woke up to go and ease himself. <laughs> but because of sleepy eyes, he didn't even take note of the fact that, that he didn't walk with his uh, clutches. Because of the the worst way he was uh, with heavy eyes, he just went and urinated and came back. But when he woke up in the morning, it dawned on him that the man who came to him in the night, Jesus, has taken away his infirmity. Jesus showed up in his life. Many of you may have seen that uh, video clip. Because people who knew him clustered around him and were asking, "Ah, we know that you're a beggar. We know you're you're you're, you're crippled. What happened?" I mean, many of you, as, as I'm talking, many of you may who saw that uh, video clip may, may, may re, 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 uh, recognize what I'm talking about. When Jesus shows up, he will take away the imped impediment. Because that is his, his gift. If he doesn't do it, who will do it? Our mighty Jesus. He's the one that sets people free. Don't forget John A. Vitale says, Whosoever the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. Look at what you told this woman in uh, Luke chapter 13. He said, look, woman, you are set free from your sickness. And that was the end. Then in Luke 13, verse 13, Jesus laid hands on her. And immediately she stood up. She was healed. And the Bible says she began to praise God. She began to praise God. Even though that people began to, the synagogue leaders began to um, question why would Jesus uh, do this kind of healing? Uh, why would he do it on a Sabbath day? Anyway, does it really matter? <laughs> Jesus, Jesus looked at them and said, you hypocrites. You are, you are supposed to be happy that, that this woman is healed, that this woman is delivered. But you are here criticizing, you are here trying to incite the crowd. There are people like that, even in the house of God. Look at this thing happened in the house of God. It was in the house of God that the hypocrites came. And they always are the top of leadership, deceiving people. If the leader of the synagogue would see Jesus cure this woman, and they began to question why would Jesus do the kind of, do this on a Sabbath day? Uh, today is Sabbath day. He had six days to do the kind of thing, but not today. And this Sema who is saying this is the leader of the synagogue, the pastor of the synagogue, the rabbi, the one who is supposed to to know better than others, the one who teaches what is in the book of the law. He is the one doing this. <laughs> the, no one that Jesus calls them the blind at least the blind. Anyway, talking about them is not the focus of this message. And I like the way Jesus responded to him. Okay. You hypocrites. 
Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or, or his donkey from the manger and, and lead it away for it to go and drink water somewhere or to eat somewhere? Do you not do that? Why would I not set her free who have been bound for 18 years by the crippling spirit? And the Bible says that all his opponents, all who were not happy that Jesus was healed, okay? All were put to shame. Luke 13, verse 17. All were what? Put to shame. I pray for somebody today. That God will put to shame all who are questioning your miracles. The miracles that God has done in your life, may God put them to shame by giving you more miracles in the name of Jesus. Hell! So, my people of God, let us always seek God. For that is the focus of this message. Let us keep serving God. Keep worshiping God. Okay? Let us ask Him to touch us. I don't know the situation you are going through, but now that you have come to the house of prayer, talk to God now. He touched this woman and turned things around in her life and she was healed and praising God. There is something that God will do in your life even in this prayer tonight that will bring forth testimonies in your life. Can you talk to God now? You have been coming to this house of prayer. You have been coming to this ministry, maybe for months, maybe for years. But there's something you have been asking God. You haven't gotten it yet. Today, I am in agreement with you. Today, I am praying with you and I'm asking the mighty Jesus to show up. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. I don't know what is crippling you, but in spite of that situation, you kept coming to the ministry. You continued to pray. You continued to fast. You haven't got it yet, but it didn't stop you from coming. It didn't stop you from calling into the prayer line every day. You joined the rosary. You joined the Holy Spirit prayer line. You joined a time with Mary. Oh, my goodness. And every first day you are there, you think that God is not taking note. You are sowing seeds. You are planting in the garden. And the time of reaping is soon. Jesus. Talk to him. Could it be that Jesus has come to this prayer line today because of you? Just like he came to the synagogue on that Sabbath day because of this woman, not because of the crowd. Could it be because of you that he came tonight? Is it because of you that he is on the throne this night? Is it because of you? Oh, sister, praise God. Brother, praise God. That he has come because of you. Ask him to bless you. Ask him to touch you. In fact, this woman that has story has become the preacher tonight did not even ask Jesus to heal her. Do you not see that? In the case of the blind Bartimaeus, at least Bartimaeus was crying out. For healing. And Jesus healed him and healed him. But in the case of this woman, <laughs> there was no request. She did not even go to Jesus and, and ask him for healing. He, she never said, Lord, heal me. But Jesus came. 
You know, there are miracles we receive from God that we receive these miracles not because we have asked the Lord to heal us. The Lord just heals. Is somebody aware of that? He just heals. You just follow that this, this, this is gone. Perhaps you have been praying for years for that particular problem, but over years you forgot about it. You don't even pray about it again. But only one day, oh, I don't see this problem again. <laughs> Sometimes there may be problems we have or that are coming that we don't even know we have such a problem. You just take it off. Somebody may have a tumor without knowing the he or she has a tumor. And Jesus, Jesus just take it off. You won't even know he got healed. <laughs> so even tonight, we are crying to the Lord for a visitation. And so it has pleased him to come to this prayer meeting. Let it come to pass that he said to his children, present your petitions at this point in time and talk to the great God who has. Talk to the great God we have. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Father, touch your children. Father, feed your children with your fire. Bring healing upon your people. Take away the infirmity, O Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I command that crippling spirit to come out in the name of Jesus. Come out, son, go to that beast. Whatever thing that have come to cripple a child of God. Today I pray that the story of this woman, the testimony of this woman, of Luke 13, verse 10 to 17, shall be your testimony. That shall be your story. That God will show up and turn things around, bringing forth fruitfulness where there is unfruitfulness. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord sanctify you. Bless your family. Visit your family. Visit your job. Visit your health. Visit your relationships. Father, take over tonight. We have heard what you did for this woman. And it is good for us. Father, thank you. For you have healed us. For you have visited us. For you have blessed us. For you have taken off that enemy. You have taken the enemy away. You have brought judgment against the enemies. You have cast down the enemies. You have thrown them away. You have dethroned them. Father, to you be all the glory. To you be all the worship and adoration. Belongs to your most holy name. Yes, my Lord, thank you. Thank you for coming to set us free. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for taking away the pain. Thank you for the pain that have gone, the pains, the ugly situations that have been taken away instantly, and for those that will be going out gradually. We know that the miracle is sure, but it may come gradually for most people. It may be instant for some people. Father, whichever way you decide, we know that you are a perfect God. We know that what you do is perfect. Have your way, Lord. We put all our limitations on your palm that you may take over and pray with it, Lord. Blessed be your name. We'll give you our emotions. We'll give you our brokenness. Father, take it. They all belong to you. We we'll receive your freedom. We we'll give you our worry. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We we'll give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. With thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus.
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and till our Father, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.